Three, two, one. How you doing, guys? So we just want to. <laughs> I know we gotta get the good part. Hold up, hold up. So how, how, we're gonna be like, how you doing, uh, what's guys? The, what's the, um, flipping cars. Flipping yeah. Cars. All right. Three, two, one. How you doing, guys? So today we're gonna be doing a new series on how to flip a car. Um, just a quick little recap. This is my friend Calvin. You guys probably gonna see him in a lot of videos, and you probably have seen him in a couple already. This is a 2009 Ford Crown Vic XDEA car. It's a P71 for the guys I know. That's the police VIN number. Uh, we got it for 800 bucks on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Right, another 100 bucks on the trailer and uh, probably 100 bucks in parts that required to be repaired and um, replaced. When we, par uh, when we purchased the car, knowingly that it had those issues. That was a fuel tank and a, I think a few sensors on the tank itself. So in this video, we're gonna be going together on, um, you know, cleaning the interior, detailing it, uh, getting it show, like ready for somebody to look at it, and not be able to negotiate with us because you know it's dirty or whatever it is. So me and Calvin are get, uh, gonna get start. Oh, I gotta edit that part. Me and Calvin are gonna start tearing this thing apart and cleaning as much as we can, and we'll take you guys along for the ride. All right, let's do it. Cut. Action. All right, guys, so we're going to start from the back of the car forward. We already started removing some uh, carpet panels and trim pieces from inside earlier when we first uh, got the car. So right now, we just want to start cleaning as much as we can out. So when we work on the car, we're not, you know, getting cut or whatever on uh, the previous owner's, you know, mess. So first thing is this whole carpet lining on the inside of the trunk. I guess the department did this when they um, they had the cars, but it just pretty much held up with Velcro and uh, a couple of clips that weren't there anymore. As you guys can see, they just put Velcro and strapped it on. So it pretty much just comes out of the car in one smooth set. Get this out of the way. And what there. are those over there? These are all wires that were attached to this box right here. This is like the police control box for the sirens and the lights and everything. Mm. So th this is usually on the side right here. And we just pulled everything off and started cutting them. These are all just wires for police lights, police sirens, antennas, all that kind of good stuff. So right now, we're gonna just clean as much as we can out of this trunk. Get it as clean as possible. So we could put the carpet, after we clean the carpets, we could put it back and it's gonna look new and then we'll move from forward up from here on. All right, mm -hmm. plug in the vacuum. All right, so we found this manual instruction guide in here. Apparently there's an air suspension switch inside these cars that I do not see. It's kind of interesting for, uh, well actually it's 2009, so it's not even that old. Oh, each car is different. Huh. Yeah, see, it has the instruction for the Crown Vicks, the Grand Marquis, and the Town Cars. Huh, cool. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to start vacuuming now. Can we all turn on the vacuum? Vacuum! Alright, let's go. Okay, so we got Alex and his sister over there finishing vacuuming the trunk. So it's a police car, you're gonna find some, some dirty shit in there. Really nasty stuff. Before, in the back seats, there was a, a lining be, uh, behind the, the back seats. Like a white cotton lining. And there's blood, it looked like blood, I don't know, it could have been wine, who knows, but it's a police car, so you probably had someone who bled out or something like that. And you got like drug test kits in there, like uh, pet pipettes. So, yeah, we gotta get that stuff out of there, make sure everything's uh, all clean in there. All right, so we did a good amount of vacuuming on, on the trunk. While we vacuumed, we actually realized there's a couple of rust spots. One of them kind of went through the metal a little bit, I have a chemical that 
uh, you put on rust. Like as you guys can see in that corner, there's a tiny little rust spot. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And Point we have a hole. Put right there. Uh, right there. Yeah. So as you guys can see, we have a couple of little rust patches here. I do have a chemical that converts rust back into solid metal. Uh, so we're gonna be after we clean out more of the trunk, we're gonna be applying that. We're gonna be patching up that rust hole and then uh, kind of just putting like a light tack coat of any like just just paint just kind of like seal that color in there I mean uh, seal that metal and then uh, we'll you know uh, fix the wiring we'll fix uh, cut whatever else needs to be cut and you know get the carpets back in here so it looks uh, new and uh, refreshed I guess all right, so right now we got to get these wires out before we do anything else in the trunk just so they're not in the way. We have, it looks like two, three sets of wires. We have a set right here that looks like it's coming up into the trunk lid. It looks like they had two police lights connected right here. Uh, I guess when the trunk was open, you know, so uh, people could see them, not rear end them. This looks like uh, an antenna wire and a more police light wire that's running to the front of the police car alongside with these as well. These are again light uh, wires for lights. So if you guys see it goes through the side of the car. It comes out through right here. All these wires come out. It looks like this is just the ground. It comes the wheel. Yeah. It comes on top of the wheel well right here. It comes through the bottom of the car. One sec. Then I have an emergency. But yeah, it comes through the bottom of the car. Underneath all this carpeting and plastic trim. Keeps moving forward. You guys can see right here, it looks like two of the wires split off and they're going into the engine bay. And the other two might be just underneath, uh, underneath the seats or connected to the wall for antennas or whatever other reasons they've used these for. As you guys can see, you know, it's like, it's, it's, a, mess. it's a mess. All these wires are just all over the place. All right, so right now. Just a simple cut. Yeah, it's pretty much just a simple cut because we're not gonna really use these anymore. We're gonna rewire our own lights in. So pretty much these are like heavy duty gauge wires. And I don't really have the best pliers. But we're just pretty much gonna cut them in the middle here, and because um, we don't need them, yeah. we're not gonna use them. So we're just make, cutting them into pieces. It's just easier to fish out now. Now he could just pull them out from there. I think it's just the oh, gray one. Oh, just the gray one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Simple. I don't need these anymore. See ya. That's right. Yeah. All right. So the next step, we're gonna scuff up the rust a bit. You just want to get rid of the big flakes. That's you know kind of like what this. Uh, chemical requires. This is called Cora Seal. It's a rust converger, converge, rust converting metal primer. That's a mouthful. Mm. So we're pretty much gonna scuff it up, vacuum it up again, and just kind of layer it like a brush. You guys see in a second. That spot done. So we're just gonna use a little bit of core seal. Um, because these spots right here aren't too bad, I'm just gonna drop a little bit and just use a plastic glove to smear it. This is non-toxic, so you don't really gotta worry about it if you get on your hands. Just make sure you wash them obviously after and that you'd be fine. So we're just gonna put it on the rust spots, smear it on, um, let it tack up and put, keep putting more layers on. So let's, let's just get to it. All right, let's put this a little in here. Oops. Perfect. I know, right? You feel me? Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just gonna take my glove and kind of like, you just want to coat it. Um, it's not, you know, the way they recommend, but you could use a paintbrush, you could use a roller, a spray gun, it all depends on your application. I don't really have a paintbrush right now, so this is kind of like a, a redneck way to do it. But hey, it's gonna get the job done. So as you guys can see, it's gonna start changing colors. 
when it gets transparent that's when you know it's do it's doing a good job because other times it, it could be contaminated and it'll it'll um it'll turn like what's that called it, it'll like the color will be different i forgot exactly what color it represents oh, what it smells like shit jesus <laughs> Coat it nice and evenly. I'm actually just gonna spill it like that, make it easier for myself. Okay, just that's ah, good, just leave my whole hand. And the good thing this is kinda like a uh, a rough primer that you put on. Yeah, like you could sand over this and paint it. This just kind of converts the rust back into metal. Okay. All right, so now that we put the core seal on, we're just gonna let it tack up until we put another layer on. So in the meantime, we're gonna move on to the inside of the car, start cleaning that out and uh, assess the work it's needed. All right, so now we're moving to the back of the car. Uh, we already removed some of the, se um, the seats and some of the plastic trim. Um, there was an incident behind the seats on the cotton that kind of separates uh, the metal and the backrest where you, you know, the passenger sit. So we already removed that. So right now we're just gonna be pretty much vacuuming and cleaning up and assessing what needs to be uh, fixed or repaired or replaced. Like I was saying, we already have all this trim out so we're just gonna be taking it out and that's gonna be a uh, later on project as we clean up. All right, so again, we're gonna be vacuuming this up. Uh, we're gonna try and wash this and disinfect this back area. I think either somebody was shot or stabbed or some type of injury because this whole area was covered in like stained blood. So we got rid of that piece and now we just wanna clean it up and make sure, you know, whoever buys this car doesn't have, you know, a crime scene in the back. So right now, we're just gonna be cleaning it up. All right, everybody, so now we're gonna take you through a quick recap of what we did today on the car. Well, you can cut it. I ain't cut nothing. So we start, you ready? Yeah, I'm filming. Okay, so we start off at the trunk. Speak louder, my mom's not gonna care. I know, she's kinda I'm she's throwing me off. <laughs> You're throwing off my mojo, Mary. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it. So we started off in the trunk. We gutted it out. We took out all the body bags and all that. Just kidding. But as you can see right here, earlier in the video, you saw some white pasty stuff on the rust spots, but now it's gone clear. Right? Yeah. So pretty much, because he's not too tech savvy on the car stuff just I'm yet. Sure. We um we we converted the rust back into metal. It still needs one or two more coats on it before it's good. I just want to let it dry, uh, rough it up again, and put more layers on. So that's pretty much what we did for the trunk. Yep. Right. And took out some of the wires. Yeah. Now, if you come with me to the back seat. Before we had this out, you see early in the video, we, th these are two separate pieces, the back piece, the seat piece. We vacuumed, took out all the, the change and whatever disgusting stuff was in there and just bolted everything back on, popped everything back in place. Very simple. All right, so Calvin pretty much summed up what we did today uh, in regards to with the police car. Um, this is gonna be a part one of the series on how to flip a car. So stay tuned, we're gonna have the next part up in a few days and I'll see you guys then. Gavin. Peace. Peace.